Welcome to a closer look at Topaz Photo AI's latest update. This isn't just an update, it's a significant step forward. Join me as I delve into the new features and see what's possible. Stay tuned. Hello everyone and welcome to the Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. I'm really excited about this new update for Topaz Photo AI. This is version 2.4.0. This is really a significant step forward for Topaz Photo AI and I like the direction that they are going. And as we know, Topaz, they are not stopping here. They are planning on adding new tools and enhancements, enabling more flexibility in how enhancements work, new customization features, improving processing performance. But I really like the direction this product is going. And now let's take this product for a spin. Hey, by the way, I do have affiliate links in the description below this video. If you're interested in any of the Topaz products, you can click on my link. When you use my link, I make a small commission, and this helps me to keep these tutorials coming your way. And I want to thank everyone who has used my links in the past and will use them in the future. Thank you so much. Today, I'm using Photo AI as a standalone app. You can use it as a plugin in Photoshop, which is generally the way I like to use it. But here we are. It looks the same right now, but don't let this deceive you because it really changes here dramatically. Now, of course, you can click here, browse images and load up an image. You can drag and drop images into here. And here's something else you can do. And I think this is new. I'm not 100% sure in that, but you can copy an image and paste it into Photo AI. I've already copied an image, so I'll do a command or control V and paste an image in like this. And you can see the image comes in and notice the interface, it is different here. This is where things are really changing. If you'll notice, this is new, add enhancement. What's that all about? I'll show you, it's really exciting. A note to Mac users, you can pinch zoom in and out, which is pretty nice. But for Windows users, you do have the zoom bar down here where you can zoom in and out as well. So that's pretty cool. Now, I hope you noticed when I did load my image in, Autopilot ran and it chose Remove Noise and Sharpen. However, if you don't want that to happen, you could come up to Topaz Photo AI, click on Preferences, go to Autopilot, and you could disable that if you just want to do it yourself. And you know what? I think I'm going to go ahead and disable mine because with this new update, I think I would prefer it this way. I'll click Save, and now Autopilot will not run when I load an image. You'll notice now we have remove noise and we have sharpen. And of course I showed you we have add enhancement, which we'll get to in a minute here. When you see remove noise, you see a little trash can. If I click it, I can get rid of remove noise. And now I have sharpen, I can click the trash can and get rid of sharpen because now we can work with like layers. Think Photoshop layers. Layers are now in Topaz Photo AI. They don't call them layers, but I call them layers. Now, due to the fact that I disabled autopilot, when I bring an image into Topaz Photo AI, I will be greeted with this run autopilot. So I have the choice. I can still click run autopilot and it will run autopilot. And you can see it is really quick. Did you ever wish in Photo AI that you could remove noise from the background and not the foreground or just from the subject and not other areas of the image? Well, you never could do that. You had to remove noise on the entire image. Now with sharpening, you could pick an area that you wanted to sharpen. But now with this new update, we can remove noise from the background, say, remove noise from the foreground or my subject in different amounts. In other words, we can have multiple layers of denoising, sharpening, lighting adjustments, color balance adjustments. We can have multiple layers, which is something we've never had before in Topaz Photo AI. But you know what? Today it is here and it makes all the difference in the world. It makes this a super powerful product. And I believe it's only going to keep getting better. And now it's time to play with this image and I'll show you some of the possibilities here. So I'm going to click my trash can on sharpen. I'll click the trash can on remove noise. Now I know you want to see add enhancement, but just wait a second because let's go ahead and click the crop button right here. There's something new in crop we can do and that is we can rotate the crop. I know you've all been wanting that, okay? So now we can rotate our crop. I'm gonna go ahead and click reset. I do wanna crop this image, so I'm gonna click on aspect ratio, the drop down, and change this to custom. 
and I just want to pull in on the right side a little bit to somewhere right about there and click done. Now this image is cropped. And now I'll click on add enhancement. And here is where you can choose remove noise, sharpen, adjust lighting, balance color. And you'll notice adjust lighting and balance color. These are out of beta. There's a remove tool here, recover faces, you know, everything that you're used to, preserve text, upscale, and run autopilot. Not sure where to start? Run autopilot. Well, I'm sure I know where I want to start, and that is with remove noise. So let me click on remove noise. And notice we have this panel here, but check this out. We can take this panel and we can move it around anywhere we want it. So that's kind of cool. I like that feature. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. I'll just move it over here. And right now, these are the settings Photo AI has picked for me. Normal, and this is my strength and my de-blur amount. Now, here comes a great new feature. You see this button right here? If you click on it, you'll go into masking. Right now, we're set for auto mask all. This is a drop down. If I click this drop down, we have a lot of choices. All, subject, background, portrait, landscape, sky, and none. So what if I want to just remove noise in the background? We could not just do this before, now we can. So what we can do here is let me click on background. The red area is the selected area or the background in this case. Now you'll notice this little red area right here. This is the image before it's cropped in this area right here. So just disregard that. Just look at the image area in here. So we've selected the background. And now we could come back and click this button to go back to the control so I can come and adjust this to whatever I think. I could change it from normal to strong or extreme, but I'm just gonna go ahead and accept Photo AI's adjustment for me and I will click done. And now it has removed the noise, but only in the background. And if I zoom into the image here, let me go ahead and zoom in. And let's look over here. Notice you don't see noise here. Now, if I left click and hold with my mouse, this is before, can you see that noise? And here's after. But the noise has only been removed from the background. I'm gonna come here and we still can, you know, fit the screen, zoom to 100%, 200% and so on. I'm just gonna click fit. But that is really nice, isn't it? Now I can just remove noise in the background. Now let's say I wanted to remove some of the noise off my subject. I'll come back and click Add Enhancement, and now I'll click Remove Noise again. A second Remove Noise. Isn't that cool? I am so excited about this. Right now, here's my controls, which I could change anything here I want, but let's click on this button right here and do some masking. Now, we still have a brush tool in here, and if I click this drop down, there's the Super Pixel Brush, the Standard, and the Object Selection Brush. All great brush tools. We still have all that stuff. If you're using Super Pixel, you can still click the drop down and adjust the Super Pixel size as well. But let's come to Auto Mask. I'll click on Auto Mask and, you know, I could click on Portrait and see what it picks here. See, it's, it's picking an area outside of her face. So let me go and try Subject and see if that does a better job. Yeah, that does a better job. Just picking my subject. Now I can come back and click this button for my controls. And now let's say I want less noise reduction on the person. So I can take this string slider and let's pull it back a little bit to maybe somewhere right around there. Now, of course, you can zoom in and dial in the right amount of noise reduction. But hey, I'm just showing you the possibilities in this video. And then once you're satisfied, click Done. Now you could always come back to any one of these layers and click on them again and make some readjustments and then click done when you're done. Now let's add another enhancement. Let's sharpen. Let's say I only want to sharpen her eyes and that is it. Let's click on add enhancement. Let's click on sharpen. It takes a few seconds to do the sharpening. I just cut the video so I didn't make you wait for that, but it's pretty quick actually. And now here is our sharpen panel right here and it has chosen lens blur for me. But remember, I only want to do the eyes, but let's click on the masking button right here, so let's click it. And notice, I want you to notice this, and I don't know why Topaz do this, and I hope they change this in the future, but it's set by default at none, meaning even though it has added sharpening to the image, none is basically like a black mask on a layer in Photoshop. It's hiding everything. 
And if you click on all, you're getting like a white mask in Photoshop where you're revealing everything. But remember, I only want to do the eyes. So I'm going to click on none. And now it's not selecting anything. Now let me go ahead and zoom in. I'm just going to use this slider adjustment here. Zoom into the eyes. I'm going to use the shortcut key H. Hold that down to get the hand tool. And now I'm going to move this into position on the eyes. For the eyes, I would use a brush. So right now I'm on the super pixel brush. Let me click the drop down. Let's try the object selection brush. I'm going to hover over this eye and see, and see it's going to select the entire face. So let me go ahead and let's try the super pixel brush. Yeah, you know what? I can use it. Just hover over an area and click. Maybe right there, click again, and maybe right there. Click again, now come to this eye, and click here. Now you could change the size. Right now I'm on tiny. The eyes are small, so tiny would be the appropriate brush. I think that's good. I got my eye selected there. I can always come back and touch it up. Now when you're using this super pixel brush, when you hover over areas, it's picking pixels, but they don't get selected until you actually click with your mouse. So now that I'm done here, I could come back and click on this button to go back to my sharpen control. And now I have a choice here. Now I'm only selecting the eye. So it has chosen lens blur for me. So let me go ahead and increase that sharpness like that. Now if I left click with my mouse, here's before and here's after. Again, before and after. That looks good. I'm going to click done. And now let me go ahead and zoom to fit. So I'm going to come down here and click on fit. And now let's work on the lighting. Let's come up to add enhancement. This is really fun. And we'll click adjust lighting. Now, when I click that button, it's going to adjust the lighting on the entire image. Let's move this panel out of the way. So if I left click with my mouse, here's before and here's after. But let's say I only want to light up my subject. So what do you think? We're going to click this button again. Isn't this so cool? We're going to click subject and now we only have the subject and now let's go back to the controls now i've only let up my subject let me left click with my mouse here's before and here's after and if you want to lighten it up even more just drag this slider to the right and now we can lighten that up a little bit more and now here's before and here's after and let me do one more adjustment here let's go to add enhancement and let's go to balance color Give it a second or two here and it balances out the color. Now that's way too strong, right? But I only want it on the face. So let's do this. Let's come back and click on this button to go into masking and click the drop down and click on subject. Now we're only selecting the subject. Let's go back to the controls and that's too strong, right? So let me left click. Here's before, here's after. So let me just take this opacity. Now you can drag the slider or you could click. I'm going to click right here. And that looks pretty good. Let me left click and see there's the before and there's the after. And I think I'm going to settle with that. Now, what if I wanted to work on the background? So now I can add another enhancement by clicking add enhancement. Let's go for another balance color adjustment. And this time let's go to masking again. And this time we're going to go to background. And now you see the backgrounds in red. That means it's selected. And let's click on our control button. And now for the background, let's take this temperature slider and drag it over and cool off that background a little bit. Now that's really cool. That's too much. So let me click right here. That's still too cool. Let me go about right here. And I think that looks better. So let me left click. Here is before and here is after. And then when you're done with color balance, just click done. Some improvements I would like would be to be able to shut off each one of these individual layers so you can see the before and after on the layers. Because when I left click and hold, you're seeing the overall image before and after. So that would be nice. If you have any ideas, let me know in the comment section below. I'd love to hear your thoughts, what you'd like to see added to Topaz Photo AI. If I needed to remove anything from this image, I could come up and click Add Enhancement and click on Remove for the Remove tool. Now, when you click on Remove, it will lock all of these layers down and let you go ahead and remove things. And then you can continue after removing things to keep on adding more adjustments. So it's really nice the way they set up Topaz Photo AI. And now, once you're happy with your image, you could just click on Save Image and... In my case, I would 
send mine back to the original folder. You can choose to add applied filters to the file name like you see up here. You can see all those filters I've used right there on the file name and just click save. And under format, you have different choices here like PNG, TIFF, DNG, whatever you want to save this as and just click save and save it out. Well, there it is, everyone. Topaz have been doing some really great work on Topaz Photo AI. Let me know what you think about Topaz Photo AI, especially this new update in the comments section below. If you enjoyed today's video, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe. Click that bell notification icon and click all so that you'll receive all notifications. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. And I will see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.